<clears throat> Hi everyone, my name is Rufo, and today I'm going to talk about the graphics card and its revolution. Before we discuss the history of a graphic card, we have to know what it is first. A graphic card is a piece of computer hardware that produces the image you see on a monitor. It is responsible for rendering an image to your monitor and does this by converting the data into a signal your monitor can understand. The better your graphic card, the better and smoother an image can be produced. This is naturally very important for gamers and video editors. Before we move on to the graphic card, let's talk about the history of graphics processing units first. Back in 1999, NVIDIA popularized the term GPU as an acronym for graphics processing unit. Although the term had been used for at least a decade prior to marketing the G4256, however, the GPU was actually uh, invented years before NVIDIA launched their MV1 and later the video card to rule them all. During 1980s, before there was a graphic card we know today, there was a little more than a video display card. IBM made and introduced the monochrome display adapter, MDA, in 1981. The MDA card has a single monochrome test mode to allow high resolution test and simple display at 80 times 25 characters, which was useful for drawing forms. However, the MDA did not support graphics of any kind. One year later, Hercules Computer Technology debuted the Hercules graphic card, which integrated MBM's text on the MDA display and standard with a B-mapped graphics mode. By 1983, Intel introduced the ISBX 275 video graphics controller multi module board, which was capable of displaying as many uh, as eight unique colors at 256 times 256 resolution. In 1990s, finally the term GPU was born. Nvidia shaped the future of modern graphics processing by debuting the G4256. Now let, we can move on to the world's first graphic card, G4256, was marketed as the world's first GPU. A term NVIDIA defined at the time as a single chip processor with integrated transform, lighting, triangle setup, and rendering engines that is capable of processing a minimum of 10 million polygons per second. The the 256 in its name stems from the 256-bit quad pipe rendering engine, a term describing the 464-bit pixel pipelines of the MV10 chip. <clears throat> uh, Nvidia and AMD are more than graphics card com competitors. First, let's talk about the history of Nvidia. Nvidia emerged in the 90s as one of the many competitors in PC graphics. Alongside 3DFX and API, while the GPU wars of the 90s were an interesting time, it led to many criticisms and bankruptcies until only two competitors remained, NVIDIA and ATI. Since then, NVIDIA has steadily climbed the market. Transitioning into PS3 and the 360 eras, they acquired market dominance over ATI just before AMD acquired them. In addition to PC graphics, however, NVIDIA is also making itself known in other markets, most notably self-driving cars and AI. While both com companies are interested in the mobile and console markets, NVIDIA has grown more adventurous with its non-graphics audience, likely due to their position in the market. Now, who is AMD? AMD, World Advanced Micro Devices, is the second biggest name in the world, world of personal computing, serving as Intel's single uh, rival in the CPU market. Both are continually uh, pushing the limits of x86 and x64 processors across the industry. With the recent launch of Ryzen bringing AMD back into the competition, this is a battle that's been going on for decades and it is looking as heated as ever. Now, for the comp competition so far, since the merging of NVIDIA and AMD, NVIDIA and AMD have been the last remaining discrete GPU manufacturers for, for the PC gaming markets. Gaming-wise, both companies have played uh, prominent parts in the console wars. In the current generation of, of consoles, AMD has manufactured custom view uh, SOCs for both PS4 and Xbox One, while well, NVIDIA has adapted their shield tech for usage with the Nintendo Switch. Economically and overall, NVIDIA is probably winning. However, AMD is unlikely to go anywhere anytime soon. 
Now, let's talk about the gaming performance between AMD and NVIDIA. For decades, faster GPUs has enabled game developers to create increasing, uh, increasingly detailed and uh, complex worlds, where you can find everything from budget GPUs to high-end offerings from both AMD and NVIDIA. When it comes to outright performance, NVIDIA has a clear overall lead. If you look at this picture, you will see NVIDIA holds up the top five spots. The best AMD can do is in only the sixth place with RX nearly tied up for overall performance. That makes it a pretty easy win for media at the top of the performance ladder, but that's now the only category to consider. Once we reach the $350 mark, AMD GPUs become far more competitive. If you look at AMD's RX 5700 XT versus NVIDIA's RST, RTX 2060 Super elsewhere, and give the RX a slight sledge overall. It's generally faster and cost less, though it does use more power and lack support for ray tracing. Stepping down another notch, the RX versus RTX is pretty much a straight up tie. Avida still wins with features, but performance and other matrices are extremely close. Thank you for watching.